I cannot believe the first transfer we are looking at in the January window of this year on the channel is Timo Werner moving to Tottenham Hotspur to play for Ange Postecoglou. Now, anyone who's been on my channel for a while will know I'm a huge Timo Werner fan. I'm a huge fan of this move and I think this is going to be a one that, you know, Timo Werner is a very misunderstood player from when he moved to Chelsea and I think this time around, like Ange knows who he buys, we'll get into what... Tottenham fans should expect from the real Timo Werner, in my opinion, in the video today. But in preparation for the video, I was kind of, you know, like listening to everyone else's opinion on the transfer, you know, Chelsea fans, Tottenham fans, all that kind of thing. And I was expecting it to be a lot more initially negative, but I think everyone does have that respect that Werner, like if you look at his goals and assists on all competitions, like he was no, he wasn't crap, you know, he was decent. But I think a huge misunderstanding with Timo Werner is if you're only ever to watch RB Leipzig a couple of times when Timo Werner was playing there, you'd see them playing this kind of 4-2-2 system pre predominantly. And, you know, it looks like a little bit of controlled chaos. You can see, you know, there's lots of goals in their matches and they all look like really clever football players. But I can tell you from watching them extensively, you know, that this attacking four here, they're basically allowed to go and do a lot of free pressing. So if the ball's getting played out from the back from the goalkeeper, or they're struggling to get it out from one side of the pitch, whatever, this whole four have got a lot of control and a lot of creative freedom to go out and try and win the ball as high up the pitch as possible. Red Bull philosophy is really based around, you know, risk and reward. You know, if you can win the ball back in these types of areas here, with Within one or two passes, you can get a shot on goal that could result in something. So they're all about committing that. Now that is a that's a controlled effort of four players for a start. And you may have seen good pressing from them at Chelsea or whatever, but pressing in a, a Lampard or a Tuchel kind of front three or whatever, it's not the same as that Leipzig kind of press attack action. And we'll come back to the why that's relevant for Tottenham in a minute. And conversely, whenever Leipzig would uh, be defending the back box here, you know, the two centre-backs and the two midfielders, they, they can press the pitch back in. They'll back stay in, of course, as well. And then between this attacking box here, they have to follow the ball. They have to follow possession. This player is normally confused as a right mid or whatever. But yeah, this is the kind of role that they can come into here. And again, this player can really, depending on where the ball is and where the danger is, they can be filling in, in a few different positions in midfield or over at the ball, depending on where everything's going on. And in the centre forward, we would maybe somebody like Paulson or whatever. But Werner as well, like whenever... Leipzig would be in their own half defending and you know this kind of you know have got their main box in here and then they've got extra players that can just stifle the pace out stifle the space out and you know if the ball was to be switched from left to right they've got Werner to press so the switch isn't going to be completely on but if it did get over then they would have enough time to shuffle everyone kind of over and keep that kind of synergy or symmetry that they want out there right that's not too important, right? The main important part of this, right, is Leipzig would cheat like mad. They would do all sorts of things to just have Werner as free as possible at all stages of the game so that they could just play him in a break of pace just down the wing into a channel, one-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper. Maybe somebody did keep up with him to have a two-on-one or a tap-in. Maybe a defender's recovered as well, made it a bit more difficult. But they would do so much to buy him the freedom to be loose. Now, I've got him over here because most of the time it was over this kind of channel you would see him breaking through. But he would, if the ball was on this side of the pitch, he would have the freedom to maybe hide and lurk around about here and maybe a ball would get launched into that kind of zone there or, you know, they would then have different options. But they would always be watching out for him and they know Timo's got the, the free reign to do that, to seize the opportunity to find the blind spot behind the attacker. And again, playing for Chelsea in a front three, up front, left wing, right wing, he's not got any of this freedom to go and, you know, pick his moments and pick his opponent in terms of the defensive backline and whatever. So we look at Tottenham, of course, Son is going to be out for the next couple of weeks at uh, Asia Cup and all the rest of it. But Timo Werner really, he can play, everyone said it already, of course, he can play anywhere in the front line here. But if you've watched Tottenham this year, you know, very similar to Leipzig, they press as a four. When Madison is fit and available, he's up in this forward press. And that means you're going to get a lot more out of the progressive pressing clinical kind of Werner who will kind of, uh, you know, feed off of scraps, get assists for his teammates and poach goals. Because, you know, Tottenham have been really good at that forward press and adding another elite Champions League winner, you know, capable of doing that into this mixture is going to be massive. Now, I hear a lot of people saying, oh, it's great that Werner's coming in because Son's away. And you won't be really bringing this guy in, I think, to just fill in for Son while he's gone. Yeah, I think you'll get a lot of him 
in Ange's system on this left wing because I think he can play a very similar to job to like Dyson Maeda like I seen when he was at Celtic but I think when Son is back Werner is the ideal candidate to come in at centre forward in this front line here Kulisewski has been brilliantly versatile coming in inside as well over the last couple of weeks been really impressed with him but I think Son Kulisewski Madison and Werner is the centre part of that will be absolutely phenomenal. In the forward press in motion, let's say Werner will be at home having three guys backing him up and he knows that with the quality of Madison and Kulisevsky, like if he gets any sort of room, you know, he's going to get tap-ins galore and he feeds off of them. He's definitely, I think he's quite a a good finisher. He's obviously, you know, everyone calls him very wasteful, but if you, saw, if you see the goals he scores, like he's not a bad finisher at all. But where it gets extra interesting for me is when Tottenham and Ange and, you know, whatever, are going to be defending, are going to be back in their own half, then you know, if you've watched Tottenham, if you've watched Celtic, the centre forward does nothing off the ball. They really don't get, you know, in the defensive half, they don't really have that much to... You know, that they're told to get on the line, keep the defenders a bit busy, and look for those opportunities. And that is exactly Timo Werner's, like, that is his dream. That's all he wants to do. He wants to be left alone to just press like mad and keep the keep the play busy and play off of scraps and read the space and wait for the ball to turn over and get played into for himself. So I think this will be like a real match made in heaven when Son is back in particular. Now, I did tell you in December that Andrew was not going to be wasting his time. I think getting this Werner signing done rapid is a huge masterstroke, but there's also two other moves, maybe one, uh, that are actually like really close and often as well. You've probably heard about the Dragason deal who seems to be getting uh, done. He seems like a really solid defender as well, who fits that very similar Vicario kind of profile of a guy down at the bottom of Serie A fighting, you know, and you know, I know Genoa are not that bad, but they're not a top team, you know, so he's used to defending in dire situations and a guy like that, like Ange loves guys that are involved and relegated, you know, last season he played at Salernitana who got relegated on loan and, you know, like, I don't know what it is, but Ange does love guys that are involved in relegation fights. Like Celtic has signed Oh Sung Gyu for a very similar reason in as well and Jackie Marcus, who Celtic signed as the Dutch top goal scorer, that team actually got relegated. That's a funny one. So Dragason, I think, fits. He's a very Ange kind of profile. Young, up and coming, fearless, energetic. And, you know, he's been in the trenches. He knows what it's like to get slapped about in the face in the relegation zone. And, you know, that's the sort of level of defender you want. I guess, isn't it? As a guy that blood and guts and all the rest of it. And if you're going to be selling a Henrik Dyer to Bayern Munich, then uh, getting Dragasin in is uh, some def some depth for some cover or however you want to think of it as will be fantastic. But the other one, which for me, I think is an absolute game changer, is if you guys could go out and get Connor Gallagher over the line. Apparently, Ange has put the bid out already, 40, 50 million quid, whatever it is. And, you know, I'm a big fan of Sar, but I think he would be incredible uh, glue between... Basuma letting, you know, letting Madison be as free as he needs to be. That's what Gallagher will really, first of all, allow you to do. We've still given Basuma whatever it is he's after as well and being that link up plate. Like, I think Gallagher Sar could carry that kind of mantle at Tottenham in midfield very, very well over two players. And you will want to get players like job sharing and you will see when Tottenham are fully fit and firing that not many guys will be 90 minute players. It will probably be very few. The key players especially will hardly ever play 90 minutes. You'll always want to get the job done and then keep them safe. So having guys that can just fill the squad out and get it to being 18, 20 competitive players is uh, better done sooner rather than later. And Gallagher for me is, I think it's criminal that Chelsea would even entertain it, to be honest with you. I think financially it makes a lot of sense for them for FFP and all the rest of it. And I think Tottenham would really, honestly, like this would be pulling Chelsea's pants down. It would be a real, I think it would be a real, um, you know, the streets won't forget transfer as well. I think it would really hit it off with Madison and the rest of these are guys in this team, which is just energetic, hardworking and elite technical ability as well. And because it's a Chelsea player, it's just, um, there's also a huge rivalry there between Tottenham and Chelsea. So it would be a bit of a feather in the cap for Ange setting his stall out as he run in London and uh, <laughs> he's calling the shots. <laughs> Love it. But that's basically what we'd identified in the video in December, thinking about Tottenham, what, what should they be looking at? getting a striker, getting a mid, getting some more defensive reinforcements and already the striker's in, the defender isn't too far away and maybe it isn't Conor Gallagher but they're definitely looking at spending real money and getting another player in there and in, into that midfield position. I think Conor Gallagher, you know, Ange doesn't, like if Ange wants the guy, like one thing I'm really looking forward to is after we get a bit of, um, if Werner does work out as well as I think he will, 
we, we'll, we'll find out about the Werner phone call from Postacoglu that made him choose Tottenham over Man United. Probably wasn't that much of a sell over Man United, don't get me wrong, but I mean, like, Ange is kind of known for the phone call to the player and all that kind of stuff, so it'll be really interesting to hear about that. Ange not wasting any time, Timo Werner in. And although immediately, while Son is away, it'll probably be Richarlison that keeps his place up front. And we see Werner maybe start out in this position here because he is versatile enough to do that. I think if Madison is back fit and available, then... He's not going to be a bad doppelganger for Son until he, he's back fit and firing. But I think it will be really when you start to see Werner played through the middle is when hopefully it works out the best for all. On screen there now is some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share and retweet. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.